Okay, so back to multicast. Um, so a host, when it wants to join a multicast, it communicates with its local router to say, hey, I want to join this multicast group because the local router needs to know um, if any of its connected devices are in a multicast group so that it in turn can tell its upstream routers uh, the same information and start the flow uh, coming through. So in IPv4, this is Internet Group Management Protocol, IGMP. Uh, in IPv6, uh, this is Multicast Listener Discovery, MLD. The two protocols have the same effective role. Uh, and so the router, as we say, has responsibility for making sure that the multicast uh, works uh, and behaves correctly. Uh, and if you think about it, this, this has to be the case, right? Because you have this traffic uh, addressed to an address which is not naturally on a network uh, that the router controls. So the router needs to know that traffic addressed to that address um, does in fact need to be delivered to one or more of its um, uh, connected devices. So the router, as we know, has a, a, a unicast forwarding table uh, that has information on the IP addresses that are local, uh, you know, that are under its uh, connection. Uh, and so that's used for sending unicast packets. So to support multicast, the router has, to has a separate table uh, for multicast uh, forwarding so that it knows for each multicast address on which links it needs to forward the multicast packets. Uh, so you know, multicast, uh, sorry, unicast tables collectively specify paths between nodes. Uh, with multicast, it's from one node and it goes out to many. So this is a, a tree structure. So multicast forwarding tables collectively um, describe trees rather than paths. So these are called multicast distribution trees. So for source specific multicast, the forwarding table needs to know which links uh, to use which is a combination of the multicast destination address um, and the, um, the source uh, unicast IP address, because that's what defines the source specific multicast uh, session. Uh, and so then multicast routing is how we use this information uh, to work out what the, uh, the distribution trees are for the multicast traffic. So it's possible to use a distance vector uh, approach to this. Uh, so each router already knows how to get to the, uh, some source address S and then that will go through some router N, right? Uh, so when we receive a multicast packet from S, we send it out all the other links, but only if it's come in from N. So if it's come from where we believe we can get to S through, so that would be the shortest path. We assume that it's uh, symmetric, uh, that our shortest path to S is also uh, the shortest path that S will take to get to us, uh, then we don't send it out. Um, and otherwise, uh, we send it out to the others. So this eliminates uh, uh, duplication uh, by having that you know, the parent th the way back to S removed uh, from the link. Uh, and you know, because we know the shortest path to S, uh, we can determine that. Um, if there are two equally good paths to S, uh, then we use the lowest numbered IP address uh, to break the tie so that this will be deterministic. Um, again, the determinism helps to make sure that we don't end up with any nasty loops uh, sneaking in. So then we need to also consider uh, how we uh, indicate the reverse path direction. So this is using reverse path uh, path broadcast, RPB. And so we want to prune out all of those networks. Again, we've received a packet from S, it's come in via N, we send it out via every other link that we have. What we want to do is to only send it out to those uh, that have a member of that multicast group. So each uh, router can propagate a, a message that says that there is, um, you know, whether there are or aren't members in the group. So the router has to first work out if it's a, a leaf uh, with no members in G. Um, so, uh, and then second to that, it needs to know if there are any nodes in its area uh, that are actually uh, in the group. 
Uh, and if there aren't, it can send an upstream message whenever it receives multicast traffic to a particular multicast address to say there are no members of G here. So this only happens when a multicast address uh, becomes active. So when it sees traffic from a multicast address and it goes, but hang on, I don't have anyone here who needs that data. It will basically send a message upstream uh, to prune itself from that multicast uh, uh, tree. So uh, I think we'll attack that in the next video.